This is part two of the introduction to IAR systems embedded workbench for ARM. My name is Dwayne Gibson and during this video we will focus on the download and debug aspects of the embedded workbench for ARM IDE and utilize the CSPY debugger to debug an application example project. In the previous video we showed how to load an example project from the IAR Information Center for ARM. In this particular project, we have loaded the Light Effects project to run on the STM32F429II-ACA Academy board. I have connected in the video the board to an iJet debug probe connected over serial wire uh, debug interface to the target board. This board is then this debugger is then connected to the host PC utilizing a USB connection. Target power is being provided by the iJet debugger based upon the project setup done in the previous video. Before we get started, I wanted to point out to you a few things. From the first video, we talked about what the red tick marks next to the source files indicated. Those tick marks indicate source files that have yet to be built into our project. So let's go ahead and make this project example. There are a couple of ways to make the project example. You can use the make icon or press F7. Or you can go to project and choose make. For, the, for simplicity, we're just going to use the icon and make this project. As you can see, the build tree is being updated and the red tick marks next to the source files are, are going away. Once the build is completed, you will get a message that should say, no errors and no warnings. This will indicate a, a great build. In the example that you would like to see more verbose messaging from the build window, you can right click in the build window and select the filter level to be set at all are for warnings or for only errors. If I pick all and scroll back through, you can see all of the details of the source files that were compiled into the project. You can see the amount of memory that it was taken by each file as the object files were created. Should you ever interact with IAR's support staff of FAEs or support staff, they may ask you for a log file. When they ask you for this, a log file of your build window can be created by selecting, again, right click and select Live Log to File. Choose Live Log to File, and in such, a build.log dialog box will pop up in your project directory. This will create the log file that should be sent to IAR support or FAE staff for further debug help. I'm going to go ahead and return the message level back to uh, only the messages since we did not have any issues uh, with this particular project. Now we are ready to download and debug our example project. Utilizing the download and debug button icon located here, the green circle with the white triangle, or hitting control plus the D key, or by selecting project and choosing download and debug, we can download and debug our application into the target board. We're going to just use the icon again for simplicity. As the download and debug starts, the, the debugger will switch perspectives from the editor to the CSPY debug interface. And the target board will be loaded with the, with the built application in ELF form into the board. This project now is loaded into our board and are ready to go. However, before we hit run, I wanted to show you a few windows that will pop up in the IAR CSPY debugger. Your windows may be slightly different from mine depending upon your configuration, but you always see a disassembly window pop up in conjunction with a build window. This window also will start a debug tab. The debug log tab will be started and it will show the steps that have been taken by the iJet debug probe or whatever debug probe you are happening to utilize during that particular debug session. 
In this example, I have the iJet debug probe. So you can see here that the debug probe was found. Uh, it recognized the device, the type of core. It received the files. It downloaded the files and then verified them successfully. It reset the target and the, halted the program at the uh, main function entry point. A couple of things to notice <clears throat> is that we have a, a C source window and we have a disassembly window that is interspersed with C source code. If I click in either of these windows, the green program counter arrow will follow. This makes it useful for single stepping either at the disassembly level or at the C source level. So let's look at some of the buttons and some of the commands in this particular project. You we have the step over button, the step into button, the step out of button, the next statement button, the run to cursor button, and the go button. We also have the break button and the less frequently used reset button, but occasionally this comes in very useful. Again, our interface is the serial wire output, and we can see quickly by hovering over it what the serial wire settings are. One thing that you may want to view are any type of build messages. So should the build window disappear, you can always get these messages back by going view and selecting the messages and selecting build, or if you want to see your debug log conversely. Also, you may want to take a look at breakpoints. So you have the option to set view breakpoints and you will get a new window called breakpoints. In this particular example, let's also look at some of the compute some of the CPU registers. By going view registers, a box will pop up that will give us our register window. These windows are all floatable and dockable. So let's dock this to the um, disassembly window. Again, all of the windows are floatable and dockable, so you can feel free to arrange your workspace the way that you feel most comfortable. Here, you will see a listing of all of the CPU registers. If you right-click in the register view window, you can go to view group and see all of the available registers should you wish to see any other registers set. Currently, our registers are set to see the current CPU registers. In the uh, disassembly window, you can also look at different memory uh, configurations, RAM configurations. Um, if you have external memory, you can look at those configurations. All are captured here. Today, we're just going to leave it on the memory. As we, um, we may also want to see a, uh, a memory, I'm sorry, a watch window. So let's open up a watch window. The watch window uh, will open and it will ask us uh, to click on our, an expression. In our particular project, I have yet to have created an expression. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to create an expression uh, for us. Let's use a simple loop counter. I'm going to go ahead and enter a loop counter into our program. So let's call it a static integer and we'll call it a loop counter and we'll make its initial value zero and down in our while loop we'll create a increment statement to our loop counter to capture the value of the loop counter every time this program runs through let's go ahead and stop the debugging session. Let's remake with the changes that we've just built. Again, live logging was set up, so now we can see that their build log has also been enabled and has captured all of the build window. In this particular example, there was nothing with no errors, so we're going to continue to go. Let's go ahead back into our download and debug session.
when we get into the download and debug session, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, create the expression here in our watch window to look for the value of our loop counter. Of course, the loop counter's initial value is zero because we have yet to have run through the program. If I start the program to executing at this particular point, what you will see is that the LEDs on the board will begin to blink. So we can start the program to execute by using the Go button or pr by pressing F5 or under the project window, um, I'm sorry, under the, um, yes, under the debug window, hitting Go. So we're going to, again, for simplicity, just use the Go icon here and start the program to run. You will see the LEDs flashing on and off of the board. If I now halt the program, you will see the value of the loop counter is now set to 272. Conversely, if we go into the program and we hover over the variable for loop counter, you will see a message pop up that will show the value of the loop counter. These are very nice features within the IAR CSPY debugger. However, we have some more interesting things that we can do as well. With the iJet debug probe attached, and the CSPY debug interface running, we can absolutely capture power measurements as well as data log events that happen in the event timeline. I'm going to enable the data log window. Now that the data log window is enabled, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our C program <clears throat> and we're going to put in a breakpoint on our loop counter variable. This is going to be a data log breakpoint that will cause the value of the loop counter to be printed through the CSPY message handler to our timeline message window for the data log variable of the loop to data log the variable loop counter and to spit out its value along the timeline. The timeline is being captured in this example in time. We can look at the timeline and select its units to be in cycles or in seconds. As you can see, it is set up to be in seconds at this particular time. We also need to navigate to the end of the timeline so that we can see real time what is going on. And what we want to do is also enable the auto scroll feature to scroll to the end of the timeline such that when the values are being updated, we can see this in the timeline window. The timeline can be adjusted uh, for time by hitting the plus key and the minus key. The plus key extends out the time, the minus key shortens the time so that we can capture it in our field of view. So if we hit run at this particular point, you will see that the data log breakpoint for the loop counter value will be updated in the timeline window. And sure enough, we see the loop counter being updated here in the timeline. If I were to extend this out, you could actually see the values being printed out. The red lines in the serial wire output show that, that we are not getting synchronous packets out. This is because the serial wire out is a limited bandwidth pipe. So every program instruction is, is is a sampled instruction. It is not sequential to the program counter. This may or may not pose an issue. Should it pose an issue, IAR provides a line of trace probes that you can also look at. They're called our iJet trace probes. Another feature that we have that you can also view on the timeline is our ability to do power logging through the iJet trace probe. With the power log, we are able to see the power being consumed by an instruction at any particular time in the cycle. If I enable the power timeline, you will see a value for the iJet trace, uh, the iJet target power being measured. So if we now start our program to execute, you will see in the time in the power line uh, timeline that the power profile is being updated. You can see this running during real time. If I take and turn off the board uh, 
such that the program changes, you will see some of the values of the power dissipate. If I halt the program at any given time, we're able to go back in time and actually look real time at what those power line power levels were. So I'm going to extend this down just a little bit so that we can see many of the sample points. And you can see that there is about 63 milliamps being consumed at any given time. If we scroll back in time, there are some elements that where we were consuming almost 70 and almost 80 milliamps. So this could be useful for actually debugging uh, power based upon an instruction uh, on a particular instruction. If we click in the timeline we can actually see where in the disassembly this instruction uh, where this instruction occurred. And so since this is just a simple loop where we're running you can see that we remain in the while loop while those sample samples are being taken. I'm going to now start the debug probe back up again, but before I do so, I'm going to go ahead and uh, navigate to the end by going navigate, control, or uh, navigate in, or hitting the control and the end key on the on the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and again start the debugger, but before I do so, I want to also show you that we can we can look at the um, the power profile by looking at the uh, power log, uh, the, by looking at the power log. We can enable the power log and can actually see numerical value based upon a sample time where the program counter was and what the target power was. Again, we can click and it will take us into that particular instruction. We can then begin to step through the instructions and take an example of what the power looked like for that particular uh, instruction cycle in disassembly or in C. So as you can see this is a powerful element to have in your toolbox. The IRC SPI debugger along with the iJet debug probe adapter. This concludes section 2 of getting started with IARC.